So accuracy. We use the term accuracy and precision a lot in science, particularly in that we're going to be heading down the path of sort of analysing data a little bit more deeply, a little bit more closely how they do it in senior. So accuracy and precision are two things we talk about when we talk about error. And accurate, accuracy represents how close to the truth your data is. So if we think of a dartboard, we're asking yourself, does our, act, does our data aim at the bullseye? Are we aiming for the right thing? So if your data looks something like this, you would say that is fairly accurate data. Does that make sense? An example of non-accurate data would be something like this. Because it's not aiming at the right thing. In a science context, we could be using some super duper, fancy pantsy data loggers. Broke the school budget to do it. We then get our ball and we drop it off a cliff and we record the acceleration due to gravity. We do heaps of trials, heaps of accuracy, or heaps of precision, and we find that the acceleration due to gravity is six metres per second squared. Is that the case? Is gravity six metres per second squared? What is it? But we use the super accurate, the super precise data logger. How do we get the wrong answer? Gravity must be six metres per second squared, correct? What might have caused that? Air resistance, correct? So that's an example of a highly precise, highly inaccurate experiment. How could you fix that up? How do you get rid of the air? Put it in a vacuum. Put it in a vacuum. Okay, and we see that the feather and the bowling ball drop at the same speed in that environment. Cool? So that's an example of accuracy when something is inaccurate. Now that is definitely something you should be addressing in your discussion. So if you've looked at some theory and you said, well, we expected the specific heat capacity to be... 4.3 and it came back and now said it was 4.1. That's likely an issue of accuracy. And you've got to find a way to fix that up. That might be that heat was lost to the outside temperature. There might be a whole range of things. Clear? Precision, well how is that different? Would anyone like to venture a guess as to how precision is different to accuracy? Alex. Precision is how close the results are to each other. Perfect. So, like how close the truth they are, it's how close they are to each other. So, same analogy with our dartboard. An example of highly precise data collection would be something like that, whereas a non-precise selection of data, like when I'm playing darts, some people suggest that I'm neither accurate nor precise. Is it more important to be accurate or precise? Who thinks precise? Who thinks accurate? Why do you think accuracy, Luke? Because you saw it's other people with the hand up? <laughs> what do you reckon? Um, uh, If I took 10,000 shots, like if you didn't know where these lines were, if I took 10,000 shots, do you reckon you'd have a fair idea where the bullseye is? If you couldn't see anything here, and I was highly accurate but not very precise, and I took shot upon shot upon shot, I took 10,000 shots, would you eventually have a fair idea where the... Because you'd see some above, some below, but if you averaged them all out, where would they all fall? In the middle, so you'd get an idea. So, it's more important to be accurate than it is to be precise. Ideally, we're both... 
but it's far more important to be accurate because you can always do more trials and average your results. Clear? All right, sweet. Now, precision in our experiments often comes up when we are dealing with measurement. And this is going to lead us into our next term. So this is where we're talking about uncertainty from here. So we're going to pull up. I'll give you a few chances to have a crack at the first couple of questions. And then we're going to talk about how do we deal with uncertainty in measurement.